In 2022, we saw some record low beef prices at the grocery store. And this had a lot to do with the responses that cattlemen were having to real serious drought conditions they were facing. Much of North America was facing severe droughts. There just wasn't enough feed to go around. Consequently, long lines were seen at the processing centers for cattle. Dairy cows, beef cows, were, you know, cows for meat were all taken to slaughter. That's having consequences now in 2023, and it's going to have consequences that are projected to last for at least three years with projected price increases that we are not sure exactly how much it will be. The federal government isn't saying based on their own numbers, but the whispering from the cattlemen I've spoken to about this is that you can expect to see a 15 to 20 percent increase at the grocery store this year. What will you do? Should that stop you from doing your carnivore diet? And this is on top of any inflationary uh, project uh, projections also. So just be wary. This Things could get a little rough at the grocery store this year. So, so should you worry about this? Not so much. I think forewarned is forearmed on this one, that you can prepare yourself to for the, for the price shock, for the sticker shock at the store, by having some information and adjusting your shopping habits accordingly, knowing when the sales are, when the meat markdowns happen, and just taking better advantage of those seasonal sales, the before Easter rib roasts that go on sale, the Christmas, the Christmas uh, roast towards the end of the year, and of course, the summer meat sales for, the, for barbecue season. Let's take a quick look at some of this information, and this comes from not a fringe outlet, this comes from Reuters. Reuters is getting their information from the U.S. government. This came out on the 31st of January, so just about four or five days ago. So headline, U.S. beef cow herd falls to lowest level since 1962, USDA says. So the U.S. Department of Agriculture is reporting that we have the, the lowest amount of cattle in the U.S. beef herds in, in over 50 years. That is not insignificant. The American population has grown exponentially since then. Well, not exponentially. It's grown large, much larger, and much more quickly since then. And demand for beef has, for the last few years, been increasing at both domestically and the demand for American beef overseas has increased. These are going to put price pressures on your meat supply. And here in the carnivore world, beef is king. We eat more beef than anything else. This might be a good time for you to start looking at some other ruminant animals. A uh, lamb will probably be a good option if you know how to prepare it. Lamb is tricky. A lot of Americans lost their taste for lamb after World War II because the GIs were fed large amounts of lamb and didn't want to eat it anymore when they got home, which is understandable. But if you know how to cook lamb, it could be quite tasty. You just have to know how to do it properly. Anyway, let's look at the story. Quote, the U.S. beef cow herd dropped to its lowest level since 1962, U.S. Department of Agriculture data showed on Tuesday after a severe drought raised costs for livestock feed. Ranchers increasingly sent cows to slaughter last year instead of keeping them to reproduce, as dry weather reduced the amount of pasture available for grazing in the western United States and on the plains. At the same time, a tight labor market limited slaughtering at meatpacking plants. Declining supplies of cattle are expected to keep meat prices high for consumers, analysts said. We're going to be dealing with some sharp beef supply declines for the next three years straight and therefore higher beef prices, said Rich Nelson, chief strategist for commodity broker Allendale. There will be no help in the coming years for the consumer. There were 28.9 million beef cows as of January 1st, down 3.6% from a year earlier, the USDA said. It was the smallest herd size for the date in 61 years, according to U.S. government data. Overall, the total number of cattle and calves across the country fell 3% from a year ago to 89.3 million, the lowest since 2015, government data show. A significant shift toward wet wetter weather will be needed to break the trend of liquidating cow herds, Rabobank said. Last year, nearly 13.4% of the cow herd was culled, a record, according to the firm. Cattle producers will not make, quote, meaningful progress in rebuilding the U.S. herd until 2025 at the earliest, Rabobank said. Meanwhile, restaurants, retailers, and importers will increasingly compete for limited supplies of U.S. beef, the firm added. End quote. That's actually the full article. It's a short article. But there you have it. The 
13.4% of the, of the American herd was culled last year, leading to those wonderful $5.99 a pound ribeye roasts that you saw last summer into ridiculously low prices for ribeye steaks and T-bones and all the rest of the really choice cuts that we just love so much. And now we're paying for it. There is going to be just less beef to go around, meaning it's going to be higher in price. And this is where some of us will, in the carnivore space may want to supplement with either lamb or even, if you can handle it, pork and a few other things. Again, it's if you can handle it. Knowing full well about the polyunsaturated fatty acids and all the other things that make those cuts and those sources of protein and fat less ideal. There are other ruminant animals available. And this might be a good time to start exploring your options. Now, these warnings were coming out early last summer. We had been warned early that there was going to be price crunches going into the fall, but that got delayed. And hopefully, that will be the same here. Hopefully, this will have all turned out to be much ado about nothing, but I suspect that this time around, we're going to see ribeye prices like, you know, that this summer, instead of $5.99 a pound when the big summer grilling season hits, you're probably going to see 7 or $8.99 a pound. You're probably going to see that big of an increase, a price increase because of the supply and demand issues, the increasing demand issues from overseas. You're going to see the less amount of beef, plus you're going to just, I mean, the smaller herd size, all of it. These are all going to play factors into it, including inflation. So I'm curious, though, what you think of the story. Is this much ado about nothing, or is this something that we should be cautious about and plan accordingly for? And how do you go to sa about saving money in times like this, during times of recession and economic uncertainty, while maintaining your low-carb or zero-carb life? Let me know in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help, as does sharing this on social media. That helps a lot, too. I'm Anthony Stein, The Practical Carnivore. Thanks for tuning in.